my to my church for very old church members. So the word you use, what do I say in defense? Normally, the work I do, I don't defend myself with God that defends me. So if you can rework your word, then I can please take to it. So let me use response. Very well. So again, good morning to everybody listening to Power, the Power Station. Is an honor speaking with you. So I think that one, I would say that I'll forgive her because of the personal respect I have for the late husband. And two, I would say that almost all the things she said were lies. And three, I would say that the Bible says, be at peace with all men. So I'll be measured and circumspective not to go the way she went and so forgive her. Hmm. Then some specifics, because you said almost everything she said were lies. Yes, please. So I'm quoting you right. Almost. Very well, sir. Okay. So first, um, she said you are a family friend. Is that true? Yeah. That's not true. You, you are not a family friend to... No, that's not, that's not true. So if I call, if you could give me the space to speak to that. Okay. All right. So 2015, I, I the Lord took me to Abuati for a massive program, massive revival. So during the course of that prophetic session, I picked her and I asked that who she was holding a, a little girl, and I asked that uh, who who is a blind person around her, and she said that that is a blind person. I said who is a lawyer around her, and she said the husband is a lawyer. So I left Obuasi, came to my church, then in Elbim Zulu. So she, the husband herself started coming to my place for evening service. So I was inspired to tell the husband that NDC is going to lose power. And I see the next election, Nana to become the next president of Ghana. And he's going to be a minister. And also, he should go to a Joseph. He will lose the first time, the second time he's going to win. See the Lord. And I asked him to sow a seed in, on, in the life of a lady there who, who, who needed help. So the husband did that. So he started coming with the husband. Then the husband said that, oh, even there's a call of God on their wife, as I, I said in my prophetic, so he want me to help the wife. So I assigned one of my sons, one of my pastors, Pastor Godfrey, to, to them, their family, but not as friends. They were not my friends. They were coming to my church. So long story cut short, I told her that they should start something at Beria. They, and John Kuma said, they have block factory there. So I went there, anointed the place, anointed the two of them. Then I told them to hold a program, three days program. I'll come two days. And we are wherever I go by the message of God, the crowd will come, we'll speak, we'll pray Jesus, and the church will be established. So I did that for them. That is 2015. So 2016, when they came into power, in the sixth or seventh month, I was in Israel, and the Lord said I should pronounce Kwame Dramani as the next president of Ghana. So as soon as I prophesied that the NDC is coming back into power, they disconnected, they vanished. I never saw them with my naked eye. Since 2016 to now, I never saw the late honorable minister with my naked eyes. It's only on social media or on TV. I've never found him. He never found me. So around April last year, the promptings of God, God came to me, and I saw that there was an attack around John Kuma. So I sent my son to them, and that I want to speak with John. That my guy went three times. The, the wife didn't give the access. Anytime he's busy, blah, blah, blah. So fortunately, or fortunately, I was going to renew my UK visa in September at Move and Pick. So when I got out of my car, I saw a light-skinned lady again. So I, it, it dawned on me, okay, this is going to be, but this I'm very, I mean, I mean, the skin has changed. So I said, okay, this will be Lily Kuma. So I walked towards her. So as soon as I got out there, I said, Lily, then she said, man of God. Then I said, hey, Lily, this time you have changed you. Somebody you call me Papa, now I'm man of God. Then she took her phone. Like attempting to be on the phone, and I did a little bit of public administration. If you are speaking with somebody and somebody takes their phone, it means I'm not interested. I, I don't. Want, you are not welcome. So I just told her 
that I'm seeing something on the husband, around the husband. So she should create a space for me to talk to the husband or the husband to phone me or I'll phone. Long story cut short, then she did not do that. And as a prophet, I have a phone. I have a lot of prophets. So anything the Lord shows me, I do a voice note or I mean it down. And last year, during the 31st watch night, I think prophet number six or seven, I said it formally, I would have been clear and verbatim, dito dito, that I'm seeing death hanging around John Kuma. But because of the infamous communique from the government and the M and the IGP that we should not prophesy death prophecy, I was figurative to say that I'm seeing a deputy minister of finance in one of the West African countries with color red, gold, green. I see that he will be crushed. I remember that word vividly. Unfortunately, it has come to pass. Then now they are using her to discredit me, to abuse me, like they have always been doing, like they did last four years, three years against me, and the prophet. So that is what happened. I was not their friend. Uh, they, can, they came to my church to pray, and I have anointed them, prayed for them, and I heard she saying that I'm on a husband's stereo. 2015, how much did they have? They had nothing. I said nothing. When they came to my church, I remember one of the days I went to a court on Abu Kuma. They were using a rickety pickup, white pickup, that they have to even push before it starts. So, I mean, I have never been on anybody's payroll. So she, everything to a large extent she's saying, very false. She's been politically motivated. And if she wants to uh, put the Bible down and do politics, she should come clear. And then let her, let her address her as such. I said, but I'm, oh, it's unfortunate uh, that she went that way. Hmm. You, you said you've, uh, and let me start from where you landed. You said you've never been on the apparel. In fact, you talk about 2015, but post yeah, 2015 when they came my to power. Is back. So 2015 to now, how many years now? Uh, it, we, hmm. We're in 2024, so it's about nine years now. I've never, I've never. She has never given me money. I've never received money from the husband. Not even I've whilst they, they have been in power? They, no, who born dog that they will talk to you? Uncle. They are disconnected. When the Lord inspired me to say that, I see the NDC coming. They don't talk to me. I'm their enemy. I have never. If your calculation, you are telling that it's nine years. For the past nine years, I, Nigel Kwabnagezi, have never spoken to the late honourable minister. I have never set my eyes on him one-on-one, -on -one, only on social media or TV. I have never phoned him. So the last week where I realized that the prophecy is coming to pass quickly and we attempted, my number was blocked. September last year, I was going to renew my UK visa and move in pick. They have CCTV camera. So if we play, I can give the date I went to renew my visa. If we play the footage, you see Lily and my good self alone standing there for less than one minute. And I was telling her that I'm seeing an attack on the husband. So she should let me speak with the husband or let the husband speak with me. Nobody has given me money. But 2015, did they have money? They have nothing. Absolutely nothing. You're talking when about 2015. Is it 2016 or 2015? They came to my church 2015 okay. and 2016. Within okay. the space of about eight months or nine months. And so when did the relationship turn back? And as soon as I, I was inspired to say that I see the NDC come back to power. Which year was that? Do you uh, I think when, yeah, I think that in, uh, as soon as Anandu came into power, don't forget that within six or seven months, I came out that I see John Mahama winning the next election. Oh, Okay. So about seven months into the administration of uh, Very well. yeah, Nana Kufuado. Nana Kufuado. yeah, the Lord appeared to me that his hands are no more on the governor. So I should announce the word the Lord, I should pronounce your mom as the next president of Ghana. And since then, I've never had peace. So since then, they disconnected. So I've never gotten, oh no, never. All that she's saying is a lie. So at no point did they tell you that Honorable John Kuma was not well. No point. I've never spoken with her till I met her in September. And she did not even give me the space 
the honorable state we didn't speak with her for two years. <laughs> for two minutes, sorry. Like, as soon as I, I walk to her, formally when she sees me, she'll call me papa or prophet. But this time, no good attitude or welcoming attitude. And I said, hey, look, let me go for my visa. I went for my passport and I, I came back home. And the CCTV footages are there. But I know moving pick will be, the whole place, the camera will be there. If she has the Holy Spirit in her, and she answers as an apostle, indeed she is. She knows that what she said is not true. And I'm telling my truth. Those who believe should believe. Otherwise, is their option. You said a lot told you about what was going to happen to John Kuma. Uh, yeah. In fact, the prophecy, the one you said in the church, is still there. Uh, did it involve poisoning? Or you had, uh, it didn't uh, so now because I, there's a lot I would have told him if I had the opportunity. But, I mean, to what, to, what, to what end, and for the respect of the death, we should not go and, mm, let's, let's let it go. And let those of us who are living, nobody will be a stone, we will all die one day. But uh, we can avoid it. Because, it, like, granted, you, you told me, which is a lie, and a prophet of my church, Satan, has stood on platform 31st that I'm one of the most to watch and listen to prophets in the country. Then I have used what you told me to prophesy. You didn't come out. Knowing how, how the hatred you people have for me now because I prophesied that your mama will be the next president by the message of God, you would have come out. So said that what Prophet Nigel is saying, we told him, I told him, and it's not true. And nobody tells me. It's a spirit that results to me. Am I a medical doctor to know that he is sick and it's a terminal sickness? No. No. We, we speak the mind of God and put up. So throughout the time when he was sick, at no point did they get in touch with you to say, oh, pray for never, us or anything, ever, nothing like that? Never, ever. The word is never, N-E-V-E-R, never, ever capitalized. Never, ever. Never somebody have poor Elon. I'm now their enemy because I the what I saw is not to the advantage. When Kennedy, I remember I was in I was in London or America, when Kennedy, Honorable Kennedy was attacking me, she came on my page chillingly to abuse me. She came on my page, wrote a lot of nasty things under my page, but I forgave her and I said, You are doing this because of politics. I forgive you. It's unfortunate you put the Bible down in chosen politics. But you see, if she wants to do politics, she should come clear. If she wants the husband's state, so she is being coached by politicians to come and discredit every prophet. They show that we are not to the advantage. They should come. Then let's, let's take it from there. Because this time, I'm not going to sit down like what they did to me last three or four years. I will speak out and I have investment to protect. One thing she said is that my wife has left the house. I've never been divorced. My wife has never divorced me. That is a lie. My kids are in London. My wife is in London. So what's she saying? Again, it's a lie. And if you're a prophet in this country, the only thing they will tell you is that womanizing, that is too cheap. They should come again. That is That story, that narrative, is to, Solomon was a womanizer. God used him. And so they should come again. And that is not the lie we live. So she should come again. They should come again. The MPP and this story again. Uh, uh, Yesterday on social media, uh, no, no, they should come again. They should come again. In fact, Prof, Prophet, yes, sir, boy. is the Solomon example an acceptance that you actually do what he said? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. What I'm, I'm quoting scripture. And don't forget that I'm not a saint, but I'm a perfect man of God. I am not one of the hypocrites. I'm never, and I'll never be. And there are nobody called me. Nobody gave me the gift and it's made on me. I am never a saint. I'm not one of the men of God who are saints. I'm not an, a saint, but I'm a perfect man of God. And so that, that, that government, the one who put it on me and on Pambo and the other prophets in Ghana, it will not wash. But I can understand them. Look at what they even did to senior prophet Usu Ben Pass. So I can understand their, I can understand them because when power changes, most of them go to jail. They lose their ethics. They lose all the fortunes. Most of them have stolen. So I can understand their hesitation and their consistency of 
denigrating us, discrediting us, whereas the messenger is discredited, then his message is not taken seriously. But it will not work because what we are doing is spiritual. It is the spirit, and nobody can stop the spirit. The president cannot even stop us, and nobody. You know, we spoke as prophets in the nation, and they are prophets in Ghana, that they'll come, like, look at somebody like Jefferson Saki, did the same thing, anointed him, prayed for him, and a lot of them, now, because I said I'm seeing a different thing, they are all disconnected. We are not worried about that. But what the, the what they want to put us on, that shoe will not work this time. It will not work this time. And I don't want to say things, because I've been advised by my elders to be moderate and circumspective. She is a married woman. So she should not let me say things prophetically that the family of the late minister will really be mad with her. She should not. And she knows I see. But she has bowed down, kneeled down, and poured oil on her. Hebrews 7 7. She should go and read it. So, sir, so let me run away if you have done with your question, sir. Hmm. Let me conclude then by asking you when you put out the prophecy, um, was this something that you thought could be reversed? Yeah, it could have been reversed. It easily could have been reversed. It could have been. Yeah, it could have been reversed. Yeah, and we'll, we'll... Let me say this. Again, good morning to everybody listening, and to my every senior man of God in the country and the prophet of God. Uh, one of their big MPP, one of their very, very big men, I saw something, and I said it in church. Fortunately, one of the daughters were there, and he heard it. This big man, if I mention his name, you'll be shocked. Came in humility with their wife and some people. I prayed for him. The Lord told me she, they should go and first see water to just bath at 1 a.m. This man did it. Three days after the direction, the very thing I was inspired to see came to pass. But the man did not die. Why? Because she has, he has respected the prophetic word of God. Why? Because when a prophet sees and you act on it, it is averted, abrogated, and terminated. It is bad. Like Isaiah did for Hezekiah. So this would have been averted. But again, in Ghana, they choose policies about everything. They choose policies about everything. But for me, I will keep speaking the mind of God. And I will say just that says the Lord. No addition or subtraction. And you can call us whatever names you want to call us. Uh, I don't think that we, we, some of us call it occupational hazard. And those who know us, know us. And we are not called to everybody. The people we are called to will respond to the oil of God and the of God upon our life. Could the reversal not have been done without him being present? No. When I meet you at moving place, somebody I used to pray for you, somebody called me Papa, and he disrespects me, will I even have the appetite to pray for you? I'm human. Between Ebony and Ketia, Kwame Apia. Ebony disrespect came on, on Facebook to do Facebook Live to abuse the prophet. I kept quiet, she's gone. Ketia Kwame Apia came, he's alive. So it's better to believe and live than to disbelieve and die. So, Seno, if you are me, I've seen something. It is formally, my nature is that I'm a learned young man. So when I see things, I'm a phone friendly person. I'll just put it out. But we are growing. I am no more a young man. I'm growing every day. I am experienced, keep getting more mature, maturity for that matter. So Ghanaians and good men and women say, when the prophet will see something, we should go to the person, this or this, one-on-one, -on -one, and we did that. Because Ghanaians are saying that now, when we see something, we should go to the people in person. I personally did that. And look, and they disrespected us. So, Senna, what, what do you want me to do? And it's not every prophet that, or prophecy that on the account and ticket of the covenant of the prophet, the prophet can terminate it or cancel it. Some, the person, the recipient, must, must do a, a prophetic action. Maybe a three day fasting. Maybe be cautious of something. And I know very well that Honorable John Kuma, I know is the wife that influenced her not to fall for this prophecy because I prophesied the NDC is coming. To All my problem in Ghana is because I said NDC is coming. But I also say here yeah, that when NDC comes by the grace of some years, when I say that 
I see MPP, NDC people not do that to me. The, all my problem is because of Jomama and the NDC. But Jesus is alive, and the prophetic is real, and God is still speaking. Prophet, thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. Uh, it's a great uh, pleasure, and I say good morning to everybody. And before I go, I'll suggest to everybody that please give yourself to Jesus and don't take prophecy for granted. I appreciate it. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Mm. Prophet Nigel Gezi is leader and founder of Prophetic Hill Chapel. Responding to the assertions made by the widow of the uh, late former uh, late deputy finance minister, uh, John Kuma, um, he actually uh, made a prophecy on the night of 31st December about this exactly this happening that, uh, in fact, he has seen something of this sort. Liar.